What's up you guys? Hey y'all, it's Laura and I'm excited to talk about this topic because it has actually come up several times. Um, I have had the opportunity to chat with a few of you um, here on Facebook and of course um, people who email me when they find my YouTube videos and stuff like that. So. I wanted to come on here and talk about this because I feel like it's something that a lot of you guys deal with um, and you're not quite sure how to verbalize it maybe. Or if you have a growing network marketing team, um, you probably wanna share this out to them because this is probably something that's happening on your team. Your team has a tendency to get stuck or like, have you ever heard of the phrase analysis paralysis? <laughs> It's where you to like literally overthink things because you don't know what to do because you don't have the confidence or like the, you know, the results either physically, financially or whatever in regards to your business. You don't have the confidence to approach people and talk to people and you're a little nervous about it because you might be afraid of like if they ask you, well, what results have you had? So if that has been a thing that you have struggled with, I would love to hear from you. If you think it's probably something that your team or the people who follow you on social media um, also struggle with, share this out. People love learning and people love having good content. So if it's something that you think would be valuable to the people who you are connected to, feel free to share it. This is public. Um, first of all, if you're new to my videos, type new. I always like to see who's new, who's just finding me somewhere. I always love to know like, where in the world did you see my video? Um, so if you're new, type new. If you're catching me live, if you're catching me on replay, just type replay below I always come back and I type hellos and comments back to you guys I love just seeing who catches it a little interesting fun fact um, hey Amanda yay new uh, so a little interesting fun fact if you're doing Facebook lives here's the thing don't get discouraged when you first start doing Facebook lives and you have like one f person who's watching and it's your mom <laughs> okay don't get discouraged by that do it anyway, jump right in and give, start giving good nuggets because the reality is that on Facebook Live, most people will come back and watch the replay. A majority of people watch the replay. I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of views, sometimes even thousands and thousands of views on my videos. And the reason is because first of all, cause y'all share them and I love you guys so much for sharing. Thank you so much. Um, but it's because most people catch them on replay. So it's never discouraging when it's only like double digits watching my videos because I know that most of the views come from replay. So that's a little quick tip for you guys. I always like to kind of give you a quick tip for those of you who are following, who have um, your notifications on, who pop right on like early. So huge uh, shout out to you guys. So let's jump right into it, okay? So I feel like this is probably something that a lot of you guys deal with. Um, who, especially if you're in network marketing, okay? Now, this is something that if you are not in network marketing, but you're an entrepreneur in a different type of space, you can probably take little nuggets that I'm sharing and apply it to your business, right? So you're, you can totally do that. I always try to share things that I feel like you guys would get value from. So we just got off of an epic team Zoom. I do a team Zoom, a team huddle call for our team every Monday night. And tonight we actually had a guest speaker on our training Zoom and he is amazeballs, first of all. So he has like a medical background, um, he's an athlete, he's a nutrition nerd. <laughs> He said that about himself. He's like totally geeks out about nutrition and like ingredients and all this kind of stuff. Well, our business, our network marketing business, we're in the health and wellness space, right? So it's like products and stuff like that. Um, and I don't like, listen, I don't need to know all that stuff. I don't want to know all that stuff. Like, does it taste good? Does it work? Yes, please, sold, right? Like that's, I'm, I'm in. I don't need to know all the why and the formula and all the science behind it. Like I did not do very good in biology, people. Like I did not, I, that was not my forte. Um, so it got me thinking and I wanted to come on here to share this with you guys because a lot of people I feel like that's a stumbling block for them is if they don't know everything <laughs> about their product, about the system, about the comp plan, about whatever, they stop in their tracks and it's like analysis paralysis. They literally quit before they even get started because they don't feel like they have the social proof, the validation, the credibility to talk to other people about something that they're not totally knowledgeable in. Or if somebody, let's say for example, if they're in a health and wellness company, um, if you're in health and wellness, drop that below. I'd love to know, by the way, if you're, don't, you don't have to say what company obviously, but just let me know health and wellness. 
um, you've probably run across people who they're at the beginning of their journey. If they're in a health and wellness company, like they're in the process of getting healthier, getting fit, getting lean, getting right, losing weight if they need to. Um, and, and they're just starting their business and they're just starting on the products. They're at the very beginning. They're like a chapter one, right? And so they probably feel like not qualified to talk about like a health and wellness product or a weight loss product when they themselves are just starting that journey of their own. I want to break down that wall for you on for them because that's, that's a myth. <laughs> that is a total myth. You can be successful in your business, in any kind of business for that matter. I'm just using health and wellness as an example because that's what space I'm in. But you can absolutely be successful in that business before you have had any results whatsoever. And I'm going to share with you exactly how to do it. There's kind of like a formula to it. Um, so if you think that would be helpful, if you think that would be something that other people would like to know, or if you have a team, feel free to share this out. Um, and let me jump right into it. So here's the thing. I think everything comes back to why are you doing what you're doing? So if you're in a business, right? If you started up a business, why are you starting that business? Like what made you put your name on that brand? Whatever it is. So let's say for example, you are um, in the beauty industry, okay? You guys, <laughs> no shade. There are a lot of people who do very, very well selling makeup and skincare and they aren't really like pros at applying makeup, right? You've probably seen, but they do so well. Why is that? Now I'm not in the makeup space. I'm in health and wellness. Hey there. Um, so I can speak to like the whole makeup thing because I've got a, a lot of friends who are in the makeup industry and they're a lot of them are not professionals. They don't have certificates and backgrounds and all this kind of stuff in that space. How are they so successful? I'm going to give you their secret. Okay. It's really simple and it's going to like, I hope it just busts down doors for you that are keeping you stuck. That's my hope and my intention with this video. So the first thing to figure out is what in the world sets you apart. Okay, so a lot of people who tap into whatever you're putting out there, if they're watching your videos or they're reading your posts or if you blog or if you send emails or something, a lot of people are not wanting to consume your information because of how smart you are. <laughs> That's the first myth. They're usually not consuming it because you're so smart or you make so much money or because you're like Miss Fitness or you're Miss Makeup. They're not doing, they're not following you because of that. They're following you because it's you. They're following you. They fall in love with you way before they fall in love with your product or your business or your comp plan or your whatever. So the first thing you have to do is figure out what sets you apart. What piece do you add to this big puzzle of the entrepreneurial space? What do you bring to the table? You are not going to be the first person who starts a makeup business. You are not going to be the first person who starts a health and wellness business. You're not going to be the first person who starts doing YouTube videos. There's a lot of noise out there. So what is it that can set you apart? And this, you might need some buddies to help you figure this part out. Because if I ask you that question right now, you're gonna be like, well, nothing sets me apart. I'm pretty boring. I go to work, I come home, help the kids with homework, I go to bed, like I'm married, I got two, 2.5 dogs, or 2.5 kids and a dog and a white picket fence. You know what I mean? Like you think you're super average and boring. You're not, <laughs> you're not. There's something about you that is different. Something about you that makes you unique in that space. And you probably are gonna need some friends who tap into that and help you figure this out, right? So for a lot of people, that's gonna take some digging but and like journaling and, and discovering. Don't get stuck on this part though. Do not stay and like, well, when I figure that out, then I'll start working my business. Nope, listen, you have to go forward and do the thing because here's the reality. I started working on like growing my business online like 10 years ago, okay? I truly, I don't know if I'm a slow learner or what, I'm pretty much just now figuring out what my niche is, but I've been very successful. I've recruited over 1,500 people into network marketing, into our business in the last handful of years. How did I do that without knowing what my thing is? 
is because the second thing that I want to share with you guys is you have to actually genuinely want to help people. That's, I, tell me if I'm wrong. You can smell it a thousand miles away if somebody is just in it for the money or if they actually want to help you, right? You can, you can sniff that out. Most people can, okay? So a lot of times when people start their business, they think they have to be all smooth and suave with their words and all this cool marketing language and these pretty fancy graphics and like be this Instagram expert and Facebook guru. Listen, you don't need to have any of that stuff. That stuff is great to like add on like Lego building blocks later. But if you have all that and you're like Miss Wordsmith, okay and you've got all the sales language and closing techniques and all this kind of stuff but what you lack is genuine love of helping other people get something that they want it will be built on sand you might get some initial sales because you're really good like you're super good at sales and whatever but if if you literally don't have that foundation of loving people, being interested in people, having conversations with people, having a genuine interest in what they need and who they are and how you can best serve them by introducing them to your products or your services or your um, business plan or whatever, it'll, it'll all fall out the bottom. I've seen it, <laughs> I've witnessed it, I've had business partners that I've seen come in and they freaking crush it because they're so savvy like they're so convincing right like they've got all the smooth words and all this kind of stuff and truly every time you guys every time their business like combusts it's bizarre so when you whittle that all away what do you have if you don't have the skill set or if you don't have results if you're in a health and wellness company and you're like overweight or you are just starting and you're not really making an income that's braggable <laughs> right how do you build your business so one thing i think is really important is to have systems in place where you can leverage other people's stories i talk to my team about this all the time and i'm always like pouring ideas into their minds like use this as leverage use this as a story use this as validation you have to have that constantly constantly in your own mind because it needs to be like a reflex like seriously like a muscle reflex when somebody says you know hey does it work for this if you don't have your own personal experience with how that whatever works for that whatever you need to be able to quick as lightning say you know what if you want this i know someone who has had results with that quick like you've got to like that needs to be right off your tongue so a lot of things what I teach our team to do is have literally on hand other people's stories that you can use tools things like um, videos really short informational videos so that you can point people I was kind of like I joke around with our team and I'm kind of like you are like literally like the guy with the lights um whatever I'm sure they have a name <laughs> the guy with the lights at the airport that are they're like directing the airplane right and they're like yeah go this way that's you that's literally all you have to do you your job if you want to be successful in network marketing your job is to be so full of belief in this stuff for yourself so excited so genuinely passionate and just excited about it because that's contagious right enough so that people are like what is that and why is why is he so excited about it and whatever right so like you can draw them in through they call it attraction marketing you know what that really means that just means actually being the type of person that someone actually wants to talk to and feels comfortable asking a couple questions without being worried that you're gonna be some sleazeball weirdo um, that's like breathing down their neck and asking them to come for dinner when really it's a three hour presentation. Like nobody wants to be accosted by a salesy weirdo. So attraction marketing is literally just coming across like as an actual human being that cares about others, being genuine enough and attractive enough on social media, me not like physically attracting, I'm saying like, to where like hello i've got open arms you can ask me a thousand questions i will answer your questions if it's not for you no biggie <laughs> it's fine um i'm not gonna like show up at your doorstep i'm not gonna be like stage five clinger like asking for every like every five day every five days following up with you like it's not like that right so that's all attraction marketing is like in a nutshell you can save yourself the book on what is attraction marketing that's it um so you need to have things in place though like once they come to you 
you, you've got a couple choices. You can go the route of being guru where you know everything about everything and every question you can answer because you're the expert. That's actually not a good thing, by the way. I'll talk about that in a second. Or you can be like that guy directing planes, right? Go this way for this video. Oh, here's this PDF. Oh, hey, check out this link. Or hey, talk to this friend. Hey, read this story. Hey, here's a fan, a fan page page. Here's in a, a file in our Facebook group. Tools, systems, other things. <laughs> Tune into this PDF, watch this Zoom. You see what I'm saying? So my job as a team leader is I literally feel like it's just my job to present like, hey, here's all the tools in your toolbox team. Hey team, here's your toolbox. It's got this, 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 and this. It is not my job to make them work. It's not, I cannot crack the whip and make them do things. The, the rewards plan is supposed to do that, <laughs> right? Like if they want to get paid, they need to do the thing. My job is to try and make it a little bit easier. It's like we're going through the jungle together. I'm the one with the machete. I'm going ahead of them to like knock down all the thorny branches and all that kind of stuff to make it a little bit more smooth, to make it a little bit nicer environment for them, to make it a little bit easier. But in reality, they have to be the ones taking the steps behind me, right? So I want to give them all the tools and all the systems and everything they need so that when they have somebody who says, hey, tell me about this, this, they can say, oh my gosh, there's a, there's a PDF for that. Oh, there's a video for that. There's a three minute call for that. It's, it's seriously the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, I definitely think the phrase that you need to write down and like if you need to put it on a sticky note, do it. Um, if you need to like make yourself a note in your phone as a reminder, do it. You have to remember this phrase. The phrase is very simple, but you have to use it often. The phrase is, I know someone who. Now, a lot of people get stuck with that phrase because if you don't listen, like take me, you know me, right? We, we know each other. I mean, I know like knock, knock, I'm on your phone or your device or whatever, right? but you know me. So if you have somebody who's like, um, hey, how do I transition out of direct sales doing home parties and go into network marketing and do it successfully if, I'm, if I don't really have a list and I'll have a huge following, how do I do that? Oh man, I know someone who've, who's done that. And she was really successful only using social media. Like, and share my story, share my experience with them, right? You know someone who, right? So if you know some, if somebody's like, well, I wanna lose 50 pounds, but you know, let's say you're Mr. or Mrs. Fitness and you don't need to lose weight, but you're on a health and wellness company. If you have somebody who's needing to lose 50 pounds, but clearly that's not what you're doing, you can absolutely use other people's stories as validation as credibility. Oh my gosh, I know someone who's actually just lost 56 pounds. She was just on this call. Would you like the replay so you can hear her experience? Dude, I know someone who. <laughs> so you're not actually saying like, oh, my best friend or whatever, you don't lie, but say, I know someone who's done that. I know someone who's doing that. I know someone who's experienced that. It is very powerful, okay? Using other people's stories and layered leadership. So I was telling you guys, we were just on our team Zoom and um, we had a, a friend of mine, Rob, who is literally, he has a medical background. He is obviously now retired. He's a multimillionaire in this company, but um, he is a former physician assistant. He's a, an extreme athlete. He's a nutrition expert and all this kind of stuff. He knows everything about ev like every ingredient. He knows why, what for, all, all this kind of stuff. I don't. Um, and it was really neat because as, as he was on the call, as he was talking, I was kind of like, this is layered leadership. This is what that means. When you talk about layered leadership on your team, I hope you have the kind of layers where, you know, like if you're in a health and wellness company and you sell supplements, for example, like for us, right? We always say like our supplements fill in the nutritional gaps. So you're not getting, you're not getting, you're not getting the right nutrition from your food, y'all. Sorry, like that's a little shameless plug, but you're not. Um, you need supplements, duh. Like, uh, right? Something is better than nothing sometimes, but you need good ones. Um, and so we always say like, the, it fills in the nutritional gaps. Like if you're needing energy, if you're needing mental clarity, if you need better sleep, if you need relief from like aches and discomforts in your body, it's gonna do whatever your body needs. Like your body's a miracle, it knows what it needs, right? Same thing for your leadership. Layered leadership fills in the gaps. So the, the things that you're missing in your business, for example, like 
I don't know, like if somebody asks me, what is this ingredient good for in terms of like after I work out, why is it so important? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I just know it's good and that it works and that people's stories who use it, like it's mind blowing. Um, but other than that, I don't know. But what I was really finding interesting is that if you have layered leadership, you can introduce them to, hey, I know someone who knows all that. I know someone who's a nutrition expert. I know someone who's totally savvy with all the ingredients and fitness and why and what for and all this kind of stuff. And you could introduce them either if they if that person has like a video that explains it that's awesome if they have like a little ebook or something if they've done a video um if they've uh if they're open to doing like a three-way like messenger chat a lot of us like on on my team anyway we do a lot of like facebook messenger and so there's like th two or three of us four of us in a group and a facebook group uh, facebook chat and so it's literally like a three-way call but with freedom <laughs> so you can just type um or a three-way call if they want to do a phone call, but you should always answer with, you know what? I don't have a clue, but I know someone who is super knowledgeable with that stuff. When can you chat? Or, Hey, can I, can I get you introduced to them so you can answer, so he can answer your questions. You can leverage other people's brains and other people's experiences to have massive, crazy success in this type of business, but you have to allow yourself I think it's an ego thing or like a pride thing. I know for some people it's really hard to be the one to say, I don't have a clue, but I do know someone who knows about that. That that may sting a little bit. That may be something that you have to work on if you constantly find yourself wanting to be the one with the answers and you're like constantly grinding and learning and oh my gosh, I gotta know this and you're feeling stressed out because you think you have to know everything about everything and everything that may be a sign or a symptom that you're trying to do too much. You're not leveraging other tools or other people enough in your business. And I would venture to guess your business is going slower than you would like it to because of that. So one thing I want you to remember is this quote. Okay. So when we talk about like attraction marketing, it's this big fancy word, right? This phrase that everybody's talking about. Um, it really is just, help people get what they want. You've got to be interested in them. You've got to ask questions. You've got to have conversations. If you're not having enough people convert into sales and new team members on your team, it just, it's a very simple answer. It's because one of two things, one, you're not having enough conversations Two, like with prospects, not conversations with your existing team, obviously new conversations, you're not having enough new conversations or you're saying too much. You're like making them run off because of something off in your conversation. Okay. So like if your ratio of you're having a ton of conversations, but very few conversions, it's usually because you're, you're saying like way too much or you're totally turning them off for some reason or another. So I want you to remember this quote. It's my favorite quote. I say it all the time. Um, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. There's some little words in Zig Ziglar's quote. You can have everything you want. You can have everything in life you want. If, because not everybody will do it, you will just help, help, not sell, <laughs> enough meaning lots, other people what they want, okay? You have to help other people get what they want in order for you to have what you want. Well, how do you help other people get what they want? You have to find out what they want. Do you see? So then in terms of like follow-up, you're really able to give them what they want if you've already found out what they need, right? So in terms of like following up, this should be a no-brainer, because if you have already done the legwork to find out and have those conversations, what is it they want? What do they need? What's gonna help them? What's gonna light them up? Then really following up is not icky or weird. Following up at that point becomes something like, I'm doing you a favor to help you get what you want. Now, if it's just a timing thing or a circumstance thing, or maybe they can't afford it right now, or it's not a good time, that the days will pass. Circumstances change. If the answer is yes, they want the thing or they want to do the thing or whatever, it's either a comfort zone issue, they're scared to take that step, which is normal, or it's just a circumstance thing where if you wait a couple weeks or a few months or whatever, circumstances change and then the answer is still yes. So if you get them to say yes because you have something that they want, all it then becomes is just a matter of time. But guess what? In this business, most people quit while they're waiting. Most people quit. 
And then what happens, which is really crazy, because I'm not the type of person who quits. Like, I literally, I stick to it. <laughs> Persistence is my middle name. I stick to something. Um, what's crazy is that I've actually had several people who come to me, because I'm still standing, and it, because the person that they were talking to quit. They're long gone, out, skedaddle, because they gave up. But that person still wanted the thing. They weren't lying. They actually still wanted to do this. They actually still wanted the product. It's just they needed the better circumstance. Well, circumstances change for people on average every 90 days. Circumstances or financial situations change. So if you stick to it and you don't quit, odds are you're going to reap the rewards of that, right? But you have to plant enough seeds. You have to have enough conversations and you have got to get out of the way. The biggest problem I see in people going slow is they're trying to do too much. They're trying to know it all, learn it all, read the comp plan, study everything, study all the things before they even talk to one single person. Like you can't try to know everything. But it, like you're gonna waste your time while you're over there trying to learn everything about your comp plan and every ingredient of every product you have. While you're trying to learn all that, someone else is talking to your person about, hey, this makes me feel awesome and you should do this. <laughs> like, what if that's all they needed? Stop wasting time on stupid stuff that doesn't move the needle in your business. So if you are having an issue with this and you're like, I can't even muster up the like excitedness, right? A lot of people I feel like struggle with this. If that's you, I'd love to know. If you're like, I can't even muster it up. I can't even like, Big, get excited and like super energetic and passionate about it because I just don't, I just, I'm just not dealing with it, right? Check your belief because like I said in the very beginning, that can come through, people can smell it. Um, so if you feel like your own personal belief isn't there yet or isn't there anymore, here's what I'm gonna challenge you to do. You can be your own best coach. If someone came to you and said, Bob, I just, I'm not feeling it. Like I, I've been doing this and I've been sharing and I'm not getting results and I'm, you know, whatever. And I just don't know. I'm like, I don't know if I'm really passionate about this. Does this stuff even work? Like whatever. What would you advise them to do? Uh, it's really interesting. A lot of times I feel like we give better advice to others than we give to ourselves. <laughs> you could probably coach the heck out of your neighbor who's asking you for advice or your friend in another company who says, you know, I think I'm going to quit my business because, you know, I just, the retention, I mean, I, you know, I lost two customers this week. And, um, even though I know there's 2 billion people on Facebook, you know, I lost two people. And so I guess I just, I think I'm going to just quit. You would look at them like they have four heads. Like, what are you talking about? Why would you quit your business? Cause two people stopped taking your product. Really? You would literally, probably, you would tell them that, right? Why is it then that when we talk to ourselves and our own self-belief, we literally talk ourselves right off the cliff? Oh, they quit. You should totally just throw in the towel. You should just, you know, don't quit your day job. Like we need to be our own best coaches. And I think the best way to do that, I know at least for me, is when I'm feeling worn down and like just kind of like in a funk, you, you're gonna, like I've told you guys before, entrepreneurialism is like, is like a roller coaster, okay? So when you get down into one of those down swings, you have to fill your own cup back up. You have got to pour into those tools that I was talking to you about before. The videos, dial into those calls, read those stories um, a lot. Listen, if you're in network marketing, I'm just telling you straight up, the difference between network marketing or direct sales and literally becoming an entrepreneur to do it all from ground up with no one pouring into you, no tools provided for you, no validation unless you get it personally, it's freaking hard to do the whole entrepreneurial thing on your own, okay? Versus in network marketing, OMG, <laughs> you have like a gazillion forms of credibility, validation, and social proof. Everything you could ever want is there. The, the thing that you have to do is if you're feeling like you're in a slump and you're like, oh, I can't prospect anybody because I'm just not, I'm just not excited. Like if you don't wake up out of the morning and out of your bed and you're like, oh my God, I have to tell people about this product. Like seriously, it's legit. If you're not feeling like that, 
you better plug back into your stories, your proof, your call a leader, call your sponsor, call your upline and say, tell me your experience with these products. Tell me your experience with this business. How has this changed your life? And just listen, let them fill your cup. If that's not available, watch some of the company's videos like testimonies and um, inspiration. Like um, our company has like documentaries on some of the millionaire leaders and, and six figure earners. Watch some of those and fill up your cup. Part of being an entrepreneur and running your business and network marketing, part of success is being able to be your own cheerleading team. You have got to be able to drag yourself out of that funk automatically. The faster you're able to do it comes with, I think, personal development and practice. <laughs> it's because I guarantee you, like your leaders, your sponsors, it's not that they have an easier time. It's not that everybody's saying yes all the time. I don't listen. No, that doesn't happen. I'm telling you straight up. I've earned six figures in my current company. That does not happen. Not everybody says yes to me. Like I get more no's than yeses. But the difference is your leaders, the most successful people, the six figure earners and higher, they simply don't sit there and dwell on that long enough for you to know that's what's going on. So if you're always feeling like, oh my gosh, somebody said no, or somebody quit. If, you're, if you even have time to even think that or like dwell on it for more than five seconds, you're not talking to enough people. You have got to just talk to more people, talk to more people and talk more and realize just because someone quits today does not mean in a year from now they won't be back. But guess what? If you're nowhere to be found or if you're quiet on social media about it and you're not showing up anymore and you're not on the team calls anymore, I guarantee you, I promise, 100% guaranteed, I put my name on it. If they're ready to come back and you are nowhere to be found because you quit, you got discouraged and you left because whatever, they will still come back, but they will be with someone else. Let that sink in. It has happened. I have been on the receiving end because I don't quit. I have been on the receiving end of somebody like, I mean, they were really good at like trying to get me on this product and trying to get me into this business, but like, I, I guess they couldn't wait or they or their business was not important to them or whatever. They weren't all in. And I'm, and the last person who joined our team who said that he actually literally said he's grateful for the fact that that person quit before he joined because the last thing that a serious business builder wants is to join a quitter. So if you even have an inkling in your mind <laughs> that, well, maybe I should just throw in the towel, you better check your belief level. You better check the reasons why you want to do this and you've got to seek help. There is nothing wrong with asking for coaching. There's nothing wrong with asking one of your leadership team, Hey, can you help fill my cup back up? There's nothing wrong with that. But if you are constantly, constantly getting discouraged and needing that every single time one person quits or says no, you've got to go back and like get your foundation put in right of personal development, fill up your beliefs with the products and your business and leverage other people's experiences. Okay. So like that whole coaching yourself, talk to yourself and be like, Hey, we know someone who's done that. Hey, we know someone who's had success with that coach yourself through it. And it's really interesting. Something magical will happen when you start to do this. You guys, I promise you something magical happens when you're able to take ownership of how you feel and coach yourself out of your own funk, you will be so inspiring. And then that will probably be your thing. That will probably be your thing. You're going to be known as one of those go getters, achievers, no, nothing keeps me down. Nothing's going to get in my way. I'm going to hit my goals. No question. It's just a matter of time. I'm doing the right things. I'm talking to the right people. I'm doing the activities. I'm working on my personal development. I'm coaching myself. It's just a matter of time. If you don't freaking quit and you keep the main thing, the main thing, who needs your service or your product or your business? Who is it? And then how fast do they need it? And are you willing to wait that amount of time? Some people are going to want it just the second you ask. I've had so many people who are like, oh my God, yes, I need that. Here's my credit card. <laughs> Throwing the credit card at me the minute I ask. Some people literally have been waiting for two years. 
to, to work with me, to like, or get on the product or partner with me in my business. Oh my gosh. Like over the course of two years, we've helped so many people earn car bonuses and huge, like crazy stuff. While this person over here is just sitting on the bench waiting for whatever, right? Because what, you know what I know, you know what I know about myself? I will be here raring to go when that person is ready. Now, in the meantime, while I'm waiting for them, I'm talking to a gazillion more people. <laughs> I don't have time to dwell on, oh my gosh, like helping that person is still waiting. Nope, I'm still talking to tons of people. So many, so many, so many people that I have to have like a list of people to follow up with because otherwise I'll just forget. Like I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are in waiting, but don't let that slow you down, okay? So I hope this was helpful. Share this to your teams if you thought it was um, or share it to your timeline. You are welcome to do that. It's a public video. Again, if you are new to my videos, type new below. I'd love to reach out and just say hi and thank you. Um, if you like my videos and you want to watch more of them, I go live on a regular basis. So just tap the screen where my face is and it's depending on what device you're on. It's in one of these corners. There's going to be three dots. Hit following, hit turn notifications on and that way you'll be notified right when I go live because I don't wait for people to hop on. I just jump right into giving you value. And so if you found this valuable, share it out. Let me know. Um, if you're catching this on a replay, just say hi. I'll always come back and comment. And if you have any questions about anything that I was talking about or if you have some input I'd love to hear your thoughts as well you guys have a great night and I'll see you guys on another video bye you guys